Today in your 2020 Nissan Pathfinder, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Kurt's four-pole flat trailer connector vehicle wiring harness. It provides us with a four-pole connection for our trailer to provide us with all the necessary lighting to keep us DOT compliant in all states. This includes our left turn signal, right turn signal, tail lamps, and brake lamps. Also on the end of our connector here, we receive a dust boot since it does live outside the vehicle and this helps keep out dirt, debris, and moisture to ensure a long-lasting connection, and it can also be used to secure it to the safety chain loop on your hitch to keep it up out of the way. What's nice about this harness is that it plugs directly into your factory wiring harness on your vehicle, so there's no cutting or splicing. We just simply need to plug in the harnesses that come included with it, and then install the relays that come included with it. And depending on the options of your vehicle, you may or may not already have some of the relays installed. This is gonna be a quick, easy option for you to get wiring installed onto your Pathfinder. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's go over the installation together so you can have the confidence to do it at home. We'll begin our installation at the back of the vehicle. You will want to lay your third row seats down if you don't already have them down. And then we can lift up on our cover here. And there are three bolts inside that we're going to need to take out to move our cover out of the way. We're going to use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the three. There's one in each corner towards the front and one in the middle towards the back. We now need to take the threshold off so we can get it up. This just simply pulls up. We just grab it and just give it a little tug. We'll just set that aside. And down below here, we're gonna have four clips and those will just pop up. You can either use a flat bladed screwdriver or a trim panel remover tool. Just slide it underneath and then just pop the clip up. Just work your way down until all four of them have been released. With all of them released, we can lift up on our center compartment here. Once we've got it pulled up, we can just roll it forward and it'll just sit out of our way. The panel on our driver's side here now needs to come up and get out of our way. So we're going to first pop up the small covers here that reveal our bolts underneath. I'm going to do the same thing with the other cover over here. Sometimes if you can't get it, you can lift up on that and then you can get the cover to pop up. Then you have to kind of set it back down for it to clear to get it to come up the rest of the way. We'll just take these out with our 10 millimeter. And you'll see that there are two more clips here that's holding this whole panel in. We'll use our trim panel or screwdriver again to pop those up. And we can just set this panel aside. Our connector is going to be on the back wall. We're looking underneath the metal brace that we just pulled the carpeted cover off of. And this is the large opening. So if we reach in there, we'll be able to reach this connector. The two connectors that you see, one on top of the, uh, each other towards the right, those are not the connectors we want. We're looking at the connector on the left at the top with the open end facing down towards the ground. We'll now take our new harness and we can plug it into our connector. One of the things I wanted to point out is on our new harness, you'll see that we have a large white connector here. This is the one you could see in the previous shot, but you weren't able to see the small black one. It is right there next to it towards the inside of the vehicle. It's just very difficult to see. We want our release tabs to face towards the outside like this when we go to plug them in. We're gonna go into the large opening here and we're gonna reach back. It's usually easier if you can get your whole harness in there so you can move around more easily with it. And we're just gonna take our connector then and plug it into that white connector there towards the back. And then the black connector as well. The black connector can be a little bit more difficult just due to it being up slightly higher. Now we've got them both clipped in. We'll take our relay in and we're just gonna bring it out here so we can easily access it. And we're gonna plug in the relays that come included with our kit. We're gonna use two of the blue relays and the one brown relay and just line them up and plug it into our connector here. The relays are only gonna fit into their appropriate connector so you really can't get it wrong. Just line them up and line up your pins. 
And now for demonstration purposes, we're not going to be doing it today, but it also comes with foam pads that come included with your kit. You'll just peel off the backing and we're just going to wrap these around each one of these relays. That'll help prevent any rattles and it also kind of sticks the two together to make sure they stay in place. We're now underneath the hood on the driver's side. We're just behind the headlight assembly, our batteries right here, and then just to the outside of our battery, we have our little relay boxes here. This small rectangular one here is the one we're looking for. There's a release tab down here at the bottom. You just pull outward and you can pop it up and we can slide this off. Now, our relays were already pre-installed from the factory. If you don't have relays here, you'll wanna make sure that you install the relays that come included with your kit. If you've already got relays there, then you're all good to go and we can just clip our cover back on. We're now underneath the vehicle on the passenger side. Just above our hitch here, you'll find your electrical connector for your harness down below. The easiest thing to do with this is to use a pair of needle nose pliers and pinch the end back here. And this will allow us to pop the connector out of its little holding spot there. So we're just gonna pinch that and we can just push it on out. Now that we've got it released, we can just bring it down further where we can easily access it. We're gonna remove the dummy plug that's located in it. So there is a release tab right here. We're gonna press it on it. It's pretty small, so you may need a screwdriver or something to press it on that release tab. Then you can just slide that dummy plug right out of it. Now we can take our new harness and just plug it right in. Now we also have a ground wire here that we need to connect. We're just gonna use a self-tapping screw and run it into the sheet metal right here. We're just gonna take the included self-tapping screw, put it through our ring terminal, and then we're gonna use a quarter inch socket and just run it right into the sheet metal here. We can now use the included zip ties to secure our wiring to the hitch. You may need to hook two zip ties together to do so. We're just gonna run it through there. And just ensure our wiring stays in place. We can snip off the excess. On the end of your connector here, we can slide on our dust cap. This just slides around the wiring. And when you're not using your wiring, you can use the dust cap to secure it to your hitch to hold it up out of the way. We've now gone ahead and plugged in our tester. If you want a tester like this, we've got plenty available here at eTrailer.com. We want to make sure everything works before we put everything back together. You want to make sure you have your left turn signal, right turn signal, tail lamps, and brake lamps. With everything working properly, we can reassemble the back of our vehicle in reverse order of how we removed it and secure any loose wiring that we have with the included zip ties. And that completes our installation, four-pole flat trailer connector, vehicle wiring harness, on our 2020 Nissan Pathfinder.